Cal, welcome to the Ultra Habits Podcast, man. It is great to finally have you on the show. Mate, thank you for having me. It's uh, It's been a while coming, but it's good to see your face, mate. Thanks for having me. Of course, man. Like, you know, it's it's crazy how we we met. Like, I... I was living on the central coast of New South Wales, and at the time, I I had a uh, a contact, uh, a mutual contact of of your dad's, and I went out to go and see your dad's business. And I was talking to Tracy in the warehouse, and I had just done like a twenty three kilometer, real hard trail run. I was so rooted, and I thought, look, I'll get up to the coast. It'll be a nice little meeting. I'm in your warehouse talking to Tracy and then all of a sudden your dad Greg barrels through into the warehouse right like <laughs> do you know what I mean and okay, just yeah. you know how he is right like <laughs> and he just starts hammering me with all these questions and I'm like you know when you're in that run hangover state and I'm like oh shit <laughs> and like he just bang bang, bang 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 <laughs> bang right yeah. and then and 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 uh I think I got through it you know what I mean but it was completely unexpected and and he he somehow found out I was a runner and he told me about what you were doing and I was like wow this is incredible so for for those that obviously don't know you you decided to embark on a a, a trail run but not just a trail run you decided to run the great northern walk which is 250 kilometers of extremely difficult terrain which starts around Newcastle in New South Wales and ends in Sydney what possessed you to want to do such a thing? Yeah, oh, man, it's um. So I've lived on the Central Coast for twenty five years, and mm. it's um. I sort of got into running, oh, maybe ten years ago, mm. and it's always been out there. We've always run the, that that section, right? But um, you know, so it's always been of interest to me to to explore that whole track, and I've heard people do it before, and you know, it was keen to give it a rattle myself, I guess, but um. Really, where it came out of, mate, is um, my uh, wife Taz. Her mum passed away from uh, leukemia when we, she was very young, and um, about ten years ago, Taz shaved her head like you and me, right? Mm. Uh, um, yeah. And I just, I, I was blown away with that, mate. She, she did the greater shave, and um, I, I just thought that is incredible. Like, to, to, your hair can mean so much to to uh, anyone, and particularly females. And I was blown away with it. And for years, I, I sort of, I think she raised about 10 grand, yeah, which was big cash, you know? And, um, you know, for years later, I thought, well, I can't shave my head because uh, that's already done, but what can I do? And, you know, I, I guess I put my mind in the, the, into someone that's suffering, yeah, with this sort of disease, right? And I can't even comprehend what that's like, but I thought, well, what, what could put me in a state that I might feel almost what they feel right and i go well hell a 250k trail uh that goes up through the bush yeah you know, climbs over 9,000 meters in elevation i reckon that might get me there you know and, and let's let's fundraise for leukemia foundation and see if we can't raise some cash yeah it's extraordinary so we're gonna we're gonna unpack that so the the great northern walk you know i live in victoria now but that was a very special trail for me too mm. i you know, it's one long continuous trail and it the the reason I love it and the reason I miss it so much is that it's it, you can get extremely remote. You know, yeah. you're not running in loops. You're you're end up in the middle of nowhere, like well and truly. And you're you know, there's a certain serenity there and that is it's a brutal a brutal trail. So let's rewind back to the beginning of the running because you're not a traditional runner and I think that's what's so great. Like what got you into running and then how did you get into trail running? Yeah, look, I'm not, I should have played rugby probably. I'm a, yeah, I'm, a, I'm 110 kilo and, you know, I'm, um, yeah, mum didn't sign the permission slip, uh, but, 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 but no, look, I, I guess, um, I used to cycle a bit and I used to, um, yeah, do that and I used to travel a lot and traveling with a bike isn't real good. Um, and so I thought, well, stuff ahead, I'd sort of keep reasonably fit and on the road. And so I sort of started running and I, um, you know, I needed to drop some weight. I was, I was a pretty heavy dude. And so running was the quickest way I knew how to drop, uh, weight. And, um, so I started doing some half marathons and just thought that, yeah, that blew my mind as someone that never had run before had, yeah, to go that far. And then 
wow, what happens if I could do a marathon? Like how, you know, what could happen there? And, uh, you know, a buddy of mine registered to the Sydney Marathon and uh, and pulled out uh, about a week before. And he said, mate, do you want my ticket? And I, the furthest I'd run was about 12K, you know, like I, I wasn't prepared, but I went and had a crack at it. And it took me over five hours, which I'm not too proud about, but, but um, yeah, it smashed me. But I got the bug for it. And I thought, man, this there's something about pushing your body that far that is interesting, right? And, um, you know, during this process and when I started to do more runs, people would be like, hey, give me the old, you don't look like a runner. You're not a runner. You know, like, and, and I've got a bit of a FU mentality where it's like, well, you, don't, you, you know, fair enough, you don't think let's go you know let's go and have a go and so I guess that drove me uh mate that drove me to try different things I had a couple of mates that were into ultra running and 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 had done yeah you know, some hundred milers and stuff like that and that blew my mind like that that was like how do people actually do that sort of distance and still live <laughs> um and so I, I just started down that path man started on the trail started in the bush and um, fell in love with it. Did some stuff down in the Vic Alps. Um, d- d- done some stuff uh, sort, sort of in Queensland. And, uh, mate, I just love it. It's become addictive for me and something that I'm super passionate about. And, mate, I'm not good at it. I'm just, I just, I'm just hungry for it. You know, I just, I'm, I love it, you know. And, um, you know, particularly through this pro- uh, project itself, consistency was everything man you just got to stay consistent and you you know you know what i'm talking about you know it's it's about a day in day out training sort of 15 to 18 hours a week waking up at 3 30 in the morning yeah and yeah a bit pissing rain and you still got to get out and run 30 k's before you go to work i mean that 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 is not something you wake up and go man i'm keen to do it but you get out and you grind and you there's a reason for doing it right which is you know sort of what i touched on before yeah i, th- I think cal i think Particularly in, first of all, what defines a runner is, in my view, very broad, right? Like, and particularly in trail, like you learn in in ultra that, you know, your traditional super skinny person that's like looking like a marathon road runner won't be able to cope with long trail runs because of the elevation, the, you know, you find you kind of require bit more muscle and and the body types or people on the trails are varied and it's crazy like you know on the trail all things can get created equal like you know it doesn't matter if you're man or woman it doesn't matter if you're bigger or smaller like after running you know even half a marathon or a marathon on the trail it equalizes kind of everyone and mm-hmm. what defines a runner is very different in the trail scene and I think like you, you, you know, you, you find that like, so when you started running on trail, like, and when you started running more, were you running in groups or are you more of a solo runner? Like, do you like to run on your own or is it like more of a social thing? No, it looks definitely a social thing. Like I, I had a group of mates that pushed me, yeah, to, to be better, which was, which was awesome. But then we would, we would meet grab a coffee down at uh, Terrigal there, which you, you mm-hmm. know, you, you know before, get an early coffee there, take off up into the bush, up into Kingcumber, mm-hmm. um, spend, spend a couple of hours up there and come back. And it was real, uh, really a time together. But I also love r- rolling on my own too. You know, that, mm-hmm. that mental uh, that mental time of just having a minute to myself. Um, you're thinking about the week. What, what do I got to do for work? What are, how do I be a better, da- better dad? You know, all those, all those things, the life stuff that gives me a minute to just think about that. And I, I, I don't know about you, mate, but that there's no better time for me than in the bush to do that. Um, yeah. I agree. And you also can problem solve, right? Like you'll start to think about business issues or issues that you yeah. might have on the tools and it kind of gives you some space and perspective and you stop, you have to write notes down because you, you know, you might lose it if you don't, yeah. if, if you don't recall it, it's, it's ironic. Like it, it's kind of sad. Like I never seen you out there. Like, yeah. Uh, it's one of those things like even Pat Farmer, like I didn't ever knew he lived out in the central coast. I would have loved to have had a run with him, but it just, I, I had no idea until, until I left. So, so, so let's, let's go with your story now. So you're running, you know, you're, you're doing some trail runs, you're doing some, some road marathons and how, like, how did the, this, how did it all gel in regards to that? You were going to put together 
this running passion of yours with a good cause mm. to then push yourself? Like, what was that moment of uh, the catalyst moment there? I've seen, you know, my wife yeah, ha had that experience in her life and and lo lost her mum, and she she's from an islander background, right? And so her mum mm. was the head of the family as mm. far as the children, and that I just saw what that did to her family. It obliterated them, mate. And and um, and I thought, well, you know, how how do I contribute to that to to either make people aware that leukemia can touch anyone, you mm. know, it, it really can, and it's yeah, be looking out for. For, for for the signs of what that looks like, but mm -hmm. how do I uh, also contribute financially or help contribute financially to to finding a cure for it? And you know that was that's where the passion come from. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, you know, like I said, man, I, you know, th that that trail has been something that I've looked at for years. And mm -hmm. you know, I've when I first told people what I was going to do, and you know, that's a scary thing too. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, in saying, hey, listen, this is what I'm going to do. Because then you got to back that up. <laughs> There's something in that, though, right? There's something in public commitment there, though. Like you, Definitely. It's an accountability piece, yeah? Yeah, 100%. And, and mm -hmm. you know, I, I was almost looking forward to that moment because it was like, mm -hmm. crap, man, we're locked in. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, we're doing it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but, um, but when I started to tell people about what I was going to do, people were like, that's that's stupid, man. That's <laughs> you're, you're, you're an idiot. Like, why would you do that? Like, it's too far. You're too big. You know, like we touched on before, you, you know, you, you, you won't make it, all those sorts of things. And that's fine, man. People judge through their own lens. I get that. <laughs> um, but but um, that kind of drove me more to, to be like, well, you know, I don't know too many people that have done that, you know, and, <clears throat> and not that uh, like is in that trail itself. <clears throat> and I'm like, well, why can't I go and do that? Why can't I? And so the goal was to raise $100 per kilometre. Uh, of the event, so twenty five grand, and even even RJ called up the um, the Leukemia Foundation, right, and said, "Look, this is what I want to do." And even <laughs> the bloke on the phone goes, "Geez, that's a bit ambitious, you know." And, and I'm like, "Oh, well, you know, fair <laughs> enough." So, um, <laughs> it, it come out of genuine passion for the trail, like I talked about <laughs> before, knowing just where that's where that goes, how remote it is, like you touched on. Uh, but but then, what we can do with that cash to help. Yeah. someone else you know I can suffer for a couple of days that's fine <laughs> these people suffer much longer than that and sometimes you know things wrap up and I just go well how do we try and stop that a bit you know yeah it's an interesting topic Cal because you know for those individuals that are like they're trying to, to access willpower to start let's say a, a fitness journey or a personal transformation journey yeah. like you know so many people ask me the question of like What's that immediate, pro like, how do you get over the beginning process of the suck when you don't have any discipline, you haven't seen any of the gains, you've had no wins, like, you know, that, that, you know, that 90 day period when you go from like being completely unfit to fit, right? And most people drop off that journey, right? Yeah. And it's just had me thinking like, you know, maybe a good pathway for an individual is to actually sign up for a cause, like, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe yeah. that entry point is really double down on purposeful, uh, suffering, so yeah. to speak. Right. Like, cause, cause you, you may not have the will yeah. and the desire to do it for yourself, but the more that you can commit to a cause, yeah. be accountable to other people, like maybe that's, that's the entry point. It, and and it, like everyone's got their thing, man. Everyone's got mm. a passion or something that mm. they're attached to. And I look at it and I go, well, this happens to reflect something that's really close to my heart and my family's yeah. heart. But it, undoubtedly, there was moments during the the process where I'm like, I, I never never wanted to quit ever. There was no, mm. I never was going to quit. But it got hard, right? Mm. And you go, well, hang on, man. There's people counting on. Mm. Yeah, people have invested into this. People have. Yeah, are, are, are following along. There was a massive following through social media to follow along during the night. You know, it was a three day uh, of you know sort of run. So people were tuning in and fundraising, and money was going higher and higher and higher and higher. And I'd get to a checkpoint at 160 k's, and they'd be like, "Cal, we we raised 38 grand," and I'm like, "What?" Mm. You know, like, mm. and so that that keeps escalating. And I think you're mm. right. I think when you see that people believe in you. Mm by investing their own money 
that brings yeah. a certain amount of passion to, to yeah. a project. And I think if you can find a why, it doesn't yeah. have to be something that's deep and, and meaningful, but it is, well, how, how do I get out of this funk? How do I yeah. you know, be, be better? How do I lose some weight? What, what, whatever it is. Because I know, like you just touched on, 90 days out of that or around that time, you feel amazing. Yeah. You, you start to really get some yeah. gains and you start to really put to put some stuff together that you never thought was really mm. on the cards. And it, and it, it, it does change like that. Mm. It's, it's kind of crazy. And people generally see it in you before you see it in yourself. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, and the problem is most people, I see it in the addiction community, right? Like people True. trying to get sober, like they give up before the miracle, right? Because they're not, they can't, they're, they're not seeing the gains. They're stuck in their own psychology, which is fucked usually. Like, you know, like it's, yep. and, and it's just, it requires action. So it's an interesting one and one that I think people should take note of. So uh, let, let's go to the training of the, the, the event. So up until the event, how far have you, did you run? <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. On trail, on yeah. trail. Uh, so the furthest I'd ever run was a hundred k event, as far right. as the event itself. Okay. Um, so this was, yeah, double and a bit what what I'd ever done before. But the training itself was about a look. If I'm honest, it's probably many years mm. of training, but a, a dedicated block of nine months. Um, and on the coast, it was I can't I can never remember is it El Nino or El Nina? That's all Wait, the water. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it was La Nina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and uh, so it was that man. So it was like literally mm. every day. Like, and, when and were never... you training? What year for this? Uh, twenty two. Twenty two. You were training. The end of twenty one into yeah. twenty two. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, I've got, I've got videos of like again waking up super early, heading out to go out to Budai, like a local trail, yeah. and, and it is just vomiting down like oh, mm. i don't know how i still say it like mm. and so th it was a re it was pretty hard running you're running on mud basically <laughs> you in, are um, in like, the coast yeah, yeah yeah it's crazy and so it, like it, it typically as you would well know it was five sessions a week i was just trying to get as much time on my legs as possible mm. um you know and and it ranged from you know anywhere from eight to ten hours up to 18 hours you know at, at different blocks during the week i didn't never measured kilometers it was just the hours time time on the legs that's um, interesting yeah and, yeah. and it, look it, it it works for me hey, that makes part. sense actually though yeah, yeah yeah time on feet makes sense for something like that because ultimately that's all that matters really you, you know that you're not trying to break any record well i wasn't mm -hmm. uh, trying to break any records uh, i just wanted to make it and, mm -hmm. and i think you know half the time it is you know putting that time on the legs to go well if you needed to move for 70 plus hours how long you know yeah. you got you got to keep moving you got to you got to keep that uh, ticking it off so it, it, look it, it was hard and you know you know what it's like with some of the stuff you've been up to man which is by the way epic um incredible Thanks. congratulations uh on that mate They're very impressive i'm keen to talk to you about that at some stage but um it it, it was hard it was a, it was a really hard thing to fit it around your life and to, mm. and to try and be a decent human being to your to your family without being a grumpy old man. Oh man, oh, no. <laughs> it's hard. It is hard. And running then, fatigue know. is the worst. <laughs> There's <laughs> nothing like running fatigue, man. And There's then you get to work like at about yeah, two o'clock in the afternoon, and you're like, yeah. And your dad's fucking intense, screaming at you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Let's go. We love you, Greg. We love yeah. you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's been yeah. a barreling around like like an alpha gorilla. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a hundred percent him, mate. A hundred percent. You've you've nailed it. So it, it, look, it, it it was a fun time. It, I look back on it fondly, and it was bloody hard work to fit it all in. But I, I'm, it, my wife was extremely supportive uh, yeah. of, the, of the whole project. You're only as good as the support around you. Yeah, uh, you know, both the event and the leading up. So. That certainly softened the blow, or, or was the least part of it, you know. It, walking through the event, Greg. So, did you start uh, on the Newcastle? Uh, you start on Newcastle side, yeah. right? So you're you, yeah. you're going the, d down to Sydney. So, did you start with the higher elevation and went down? I don't remember which way the elevator or is he? Yeah, yeah hi, okay. Hi, hi, higher to down. So you start in Newcastle City. It sort of weaves up into into the State Forest, heads right out into sort of the Hunter Valley Way, and that's where mm -hmm. it starts to get really steep. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're up and down, up and down, up and down. And then once you sort of hit the top of, I'll say you yarram along, yeah, mm -hmm. over through to Summersby and mm -hmm. then it's sort of a down, downward way. There's still certainly a lot of ups, but, um, I tried to, I, I was keen to get the ups 
and the downs in its majority done before you know the the, the serious fatigue uh, sort of set in. I don't know if that was wrong or right, but mm-hmm. it was just I was keen to finish in Sydney. I think was was sort of part of it. And um, geez, I love that trail, RJ. Mm. I, 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 I still too. love it. Um, it's just a just you, like you talked about before, so remote. Like you stand out in the middle of freaking nowhere. Okay. And you go, Actually, if I have some drama now, You're fucked. it's going to yeah. be a long time yeah, until someone yeah. comes to get me, man. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've had meltdowns out there, I like heat <laughs> exhaustion, and you just realize, oh, like you have, or you get lost, or like it, it with, with what with your strategy, like were you running, were you walking all the hills, or were you just feeling it out? Were you was that the go? You had poles yeah. too, didn't you? Yeah, man. I so I, I um I've never really run with poles before in my life, and um so how it worked was I ran the first twenty five k on my own, and and uh, I just wanted some mental focus to go. What are we taking on over these next couple of days? And then from that point, I had a couple of mates jump in for different sections that sort of yeah, which was amazing, right? I I, I love yeah, sort of a camaraderie and a bit of a laugh and a giggle, you know, dur- dur- particularly during the night, but. Um, got got the certainly got the poles out at about forty k, and and got it going there. But you, you power hike the hills, um, you run the flats and the downs, and uh, until your body just can't do it anymore, and then you try and power hike. But probably up until about the two hundred k mark, I didn't have any problems with my like legs, like nothing. Which I'm a big boy, man. Big boys cramp. <laughs> I, I I use pickle juice, right? And I, I, and the stuff's incredible. And I I'm actually proud to say I didn't use one of them. I, I don't know. It was just one of the one of these days that just or a couple of days that just strung together. It would have been a bit cold too. You didn't lose a lot of sweat, True. right? Because it was the, it was True. June fifth, right? Like so, you're in the middle of winter, right? Yeah. Which kind of has it is it, advantages, but you're also out there at night. Was it freezing? Yeah, dude. It, it <laughs> the, the, the cold hit hard. It like hit, yeah. and and particularly like when you go, man, I need a rest on the side of the road, the the trail, yeah. and have a bit of a you know, five yeah. minute kip or something. You you, you just you are just there shaking, trying to, and you're trying to keep your body warm, but it just and the, then you couldn't sleep because you're so freaking cold. But did you rest at random locations on the trail, or did you do? Did you guys set up like aid, like quasi aid stations, or a so, bit of both? So I had a crew, a uh, crew, me, I had, uh, my brother who, who, uh, filmed uh, a mm-hmm. bunch of stuff. I had a, and two mates, um, and my cousin who were all involved at different times, mm. uh, through, through the couple of days. And, uh, we definitely had checkpoints and some checkpoints were 30 Ks apart. Yeah. We talked about the remoteness before some checkpoints were sort of 15 K apart, just depended on how it flowed. But I tried to, I spoke to Pat Farmer and you introduced me, which I'm appreciative of. Mm-hmm. And, um, I'd never done something of this distance, like a multi-day event mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. And so I spoke to him and he's like, man, you got to sleep at least an hour per 24 hours if you want to make multi-day events. And I thought, crap, man, I was just going to keep going until the body got <laughs> in sleep. Yeah. Which is stupid. Right. I get it. But that's all I knew. And, um, so I saw I had a yak to him. So it, every Every uh, 24 hours, one hour sleep. Uh, and so I had I had three hours sleep the, the whole time. Actually, it's not true. About three hours, 20. I had a couple of five-minute mm. kips on the side of the trail, but um, it was about three hours, three and a half hours, call it, uh, across, the, across the three days. Isn't the hardest, uh, one of the hardest things when you have to wake up and go and like you slow down so your body's kind of seized up right because once it stops it thinks like okay we're done right yeah. and then and and you look at around and everyone's kind of like you know they they look a bit rested a bit warm you know they're drinking their kind <laughs> you kind of you know you got to get going it's the it really is one of the hardest points isn't it in, mate, in mate, and particularly at this certain points you know if we got there sort of mid, yeah around 10 o'clock at night some of the boys you know were Pop a beer, you know. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, man. Did you have a beer? You should have had a beer. Would have no, relieved I, some pain. I probably should. I did. No, I did not. Uh, I thought I I used better judgment uh, than hey. probably what I thought I should. But um, you know, definitely getting up and then yeah, you know, trying to get moving again. And you know, I've seen some footage, and we go, you know, mm-hmm. we've got the, the the feature film sort of coming out mm-hmm. in a little while. But I saw some of the footage back. Of me trying to get going, mate. 
come on waking up is bloody hard work. It, but but it's incredible what a five minute kip will do for your yeah for yeah. For, for for your just mental state to yeah. be awake to to keep going again. It, it, it actually blew my mind how quick mm. your body can recover in yeah. some of those situations. Yeah. No. Yeah, naps are really an an uh, undervalued and underutilized oh. tool. Like when I was training really, really early for running, um, you know, for for races, and I get into the office, I'd be rooted by nine thirty, yeah. and you know, I'd have to have a nap. It's not easy sometimes in in an office environment, but your body will reset and um, uh naps and micro naps so i think particularly for those runners that do like the the backyard ultras as well you yeah know, they're, they're, well. you know they're they're doing they have to have micro naps like you can't just yeah. keep keep going where when, when you were running were there moments where you thought you wouldn't make it you, you've done these before mate you know you have good days and bad days yeah i think i was lucky i had a really really good day uh, a couple of days um, I truly didn't get any sort of knee pain until about 200, 210. Uh, and, and at that point, even though there was, uh, you know, a marathon to go, you see, you can, you, you, you've done it, you know, you're on, you're on the way back. And so I don't know that there was any moment where I was like, damn, this is, you know, this is insurmountable. Um, there, there were moments I definitely thought that for sure, but I was never going to quit. There was, there was never an option and, you know, Man, we got to the end and, you know, we'll that last couple of stages and we, we hit 50 grand, mate. We raised 50 grand and, and uh, that, it blew my mind. Like, f first of all, that was such an audacious goal in my mind. And then even the feedback that I'd received and then we're getting support further and further and further. And we ended up at about 53,000 or something, which it was just unbelievable. And had the yeah the leukemia foundation were were part of all of that process and yeah be, being um, promoting it as a as a as a an opportunity and a bit of a story and so you know you, you talk about why yeah before and and people having their why when that's a part of it man you don't have an opportunity to quit you don't have an opportunity and then, but there's also something to be said that you trained for the event very well yeah. right like you you basically you you simply executed which was months and and to your earlier point years of readiness hey. like you didn't mess around with your training like you were on point and on game day you just simply went out there and sounds like you just executed and look, uh and it, look i didn't go as quick as i wanted to go yeah right but but i had a i, I, was, I felt lucky to have that you know to to be able to do it the goal was to finish it not to mm. try and break an fkt or anything like yeah. that man like that me and my body size i'll never break something like that you know and so it, it I'm fortunate I had good people around me. It doesn't happen without good people to be able to execute, make sure you're eating, make sure you're drinking, hydration, salts, all that sort of stuff. Um, that that's the thing that gets you through. It's a, it's it's a mm -hmm. it's an incredibly um I, I mean it's a it's a it's a funny sport really, but mm -hmm. it is a team sport. It's not an individual sport in that instance. There's so much yeah. support that goes on in the background yeah. to make that execute, you know. There's a lot of logistics involved. Hey. Uh, there's, I was on the weekend, we had a local ultra that starts across the street from my house here in Melbourne. It's run by single track. Yeah. And they're putting on a new ultra marathon in the Grampians, which is about, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's exactly a hundred miles, the trail. And, it's very it's similar to Patonga, but the okay. whole way like there's a lot of rock slabs, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's tricky, and you're hammering your legs, and it's it's nasty, right? They they yeah. kind of liken it to Leadville in Colorado. Um, it's the first you... first year they're doing the event. They asked um they asked me to go out there and and to to be at some of the checkpoints because they've recognized that they really want to ensure that they have the right people with the right levels of enthusiasm and support uh, at these checkpoints because particularly because it's the first year they're doing it yeah and they recognize like a lot of uh, you know when you do a race particularly a formal race like the people at the checkpoint like i remember one of the best races i did was in new zealand because you had the kiwis there right and they're like you know i got the music <laughs> pumping and you know very right different <laughs> yeah, yeah man, very different to aussie culture right like aussie's a bit like all right, all right, you got it, right? like you know what i mean like you know what i mean very 
very like kind of a battler, more yeah. of like a quiet kind of attitude here. But you know, you're in New Zealand, you're at the checkpoints, they got the yeah, the reggae, the hip hop pumping. Yeah, yeah and yeah. it's all great. And you, it lifts your spirits up. And um, in that sense, it's a particularly when you come out of the dark, like you ain't been around anyone for a while, you're cramping, you feel like shit, you're um, hungry, you're thirsty. It matters. It doesn't happen without those people. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. actually yeah. one of the oh, I love that. I love standing on the side heckling people yeah in the right yeah. way heckling yeah. people to yeah. you come on man get going you know yeah. like you know it, this thing ain't gonna finish itself you know yeah that's we'll exactly right. and, yeah, and, yeah. and you know those people love that too you know like, yeah and, and maybe not in the moment <laughs> yeah and the moment they're like yeah, yeah piss off yeah yeah <laughs> so so you're you, there's there's a uh, effectively a movie right that's that's coming out blood run Yep. Uh, it's going to come out in the beautiful Avoca Theater. When when is that coming out? And will that also be kind of viewable on YouTube or something like that? Yeah, man. So my brother's a filmmaker, um, and one of his personal goals is to was to make a film. And obviously, this is a pretty close uh, thing to all of our hearts. And so he he came along and filmed the whole thing. And the story is about um, if I can put it in a synopsis, it's uh, it's about adventuring for those that were robbed of it mate you know and and doing stuff because there's a lot of people that can't and wish they could and um that that's the whole premise of it but december 2nd uh at evoca beach theater um we, we've got the support of brooks uh running they're getting involved which is which is thing that yeah 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 100 percent. so those guys have been uh, yeah outstanding with the support of me but also the project itself um, yeah, with the Leukemia Foundation are part of that, um, you know, part of that too. So, look, we'll use that. Every dollar goes towards uh, the Leukemia Foundation um, as far as what we raise there. But um, what we're hoping to do is have a few showings in every state. So we're talking to a, a couple of cinema groups to um, use it as an opportunity to, to have, have a mini trail series uh, that sort of goes around the place. Um, so that that's the plan at this stage, and we're, we're sort of deep into those talks. But the launch of it is December second, and mate, I can't bloody wait. It's um, it's it's a obviously the Central Coast is a, a you know close to our hearts, but it's a cool little theatre represents us all uh, pretty well, nice and cruisy, and um, we're looking forward to packing the house out, mate, and raising some cash. So, well, I'll make sure to share it with my net- network uh, up there, and obviously Thank we're going to share it on the show. And if it comes out here in Victoria, I'm going to go. I'm definitely going to go see it. So we, uh, we're we keen to know one thing from you, Cal, before we wrap up the show. We ask every guest, what is one habit that you might have kind of developed over the course of your running or life that is kind of critical to the way that you move and groove in life? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. And yeah, I've heard some of the different answers over mm-hmm. time and... I don't know, man. I I come back to consistency. Mm, that's consistency good. is you're not consistent at anything. Work, studying, parenting, yeah, running, whatever. Yeah, you can really miss some stuff and, and be stuff that's crucial. And I think in the context of training, uh, you know, for an event, being in the event, stay, staying consistent and, and and staying to the plan mm-hmm. will always put you in good stead. It might not get you there result every time but consistency is key excellent well we're gonna land the plane there cal before we go where can our audience learn more about you in the show and and kind of find out details yeah man um so i'll, I'll, I'll give you some links um mm-hmm. if that's okay uh, yep. rj to share around the project around the movie uh and around something like that but Man, yeah, I'm always open to talk to to anyone about uh, first of all fundraising for for leukemia. Um, you know, it is a passion. It's become a passion of mine. You know, it's mm. it's how do we how do we help support yeah people that do great work like that. Um, but I'm I'm hoping to talk about trail running, leukemia, anything, work, business, whatever. But it, what is important is that. Um, we all hustle for a reason, man. I like mm. what you talked about before. It's like you, you you get that why and nothing else matters. The consistency and everything else that we talked about doesn't matter, man, because you know why mm. you're out there doing it. So 
I'll share some links with you, mate, and and have yeah, it, we'll put it up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we'll put it up for sure. Fair. Well, Cal, thank you so much for your time, mate. Really, really appreciate having you on the show. Hey, thank you, man. And you're you're inspiring to me, mate. I'm going to start doing burpees, man. You're you're crazy. <laughs> don't don't do it. <laughs> they suck. Stick to the running. <laughs> Good on you, mate. Thanks for having me. 